Welcome to module 31. Today we will sum up the entire chapter of constructions of various topologies and a, some superficial study of these things so far as an introductory uh, chapter. So the, all these constructions, namely subspace, unions, quotient, product, right? They can all be put into two types of construction. One will be called as induced topologies, other one will be called co-induced topologies. So that is the topic for today. So let us first consider induced topology. Take a situation where we have a set X and a collection of topological spaces Yi and functions Fi from X to Yi. So this is the situation we are facing with. We want to somehow relate the set X with the topological spaces Yi with, through these functions Fi. In a topological way, relating means what? Already there is a function, you can say, okay, go ahead. No, you want to bring in some topological aspect here. So in order to bring out the topological geometrical aspect of these relations, it becomes necessary to put a topology on X so that the functions Fi are first of all continuous functions. You can say that it can be easily done because you can always take the discrete topology on X, then all the functions are continuous. So go ahead, you may say. No, sir, that won't do because <coughs> the discrete topology is too good in some sense. Therefore, it's useless also. Because no matter what X i, what Y i is our topology, what kind of topological space they are, and what F i s are, the discrete topology is going to guarantee them that all these things are continuous. So it does not relate what is happening in Yi at all. Okay. So we want to have some, the topology to do something with these Yi's and something with the Fi's. Okay. So that is one thing why we reject taking discrete topology. The second is it is too good, it is too much uh, to be expected. It is not economical to put so many open sets. Okay, so that leads us to the following definition. We want to do it economically. That is the key word here. Given a family of functions, you want them to be continuous. So this, this definition takes, there's a unique smallest topology to on X such that all the Fi's are continuous. We have seen this, okay? So this topology tau is called the topology on X induced by the collection Fi, okay? All right, the induced topology, remember, no, this is the definition. What is its smallest topology? What is it? It has the sub-base, consisting of all fi inverse of ui's where ui is range over tau i. Take any element of tau i, say ui, take fi inverse of ui, put all of them together. Okay, so this is the topology. Union of all fi inverse of u, where u belongs to tau i. That is a sub-base. Okay. Often, it is also called weak topology with respect to the family Fi. This name, weak topology, is justified for the following reason. Suppose you start with a topological space x tau, 
and a family of continuous functions right in the beginning. Then the induced topology on X from this one will be obviously weaker because by definition smaller, it's the smallest one. So it will be smaller than this uh, tau. Anything which satisfies that all of them are continuous will be containing the, the smallest topology. Right? So that's why it's called weak topology. Weak means weaker means coarser, smaller, that's all. So let us go back and examine whatever you have done already. So it is not a, a new thing almost. Uh, I told you it is all summing up this chapter. Consider a special case when y is a topological space and x to y is just a subset. x is subset of y. Now you take f equal to eta equal to the inclusion map. Okay. X has no topology. Now what we have done? We have put the subspace topology here. But just do this one, namely, take the inclusion map and put the induced topology, whatever we have defined just now. Then what is this topology? I have to take an open set here. Take eta inverse of that open set, which is nothing but open set u intersection with x. Okay, therefore, this topology is easily seen to be the, the induced by this nothing but the subspace topology. Can you intersect it? That is just u. So this is a subbase, but it's already a topology, it's fine. Okay, if it's not a topology, you better make it a, uh, take the topology and write by that. But here is a case where it's already a topology. Okay, so subspace topology is a special case of this. Namely, when there is only one member, Fi is only one, and that too is an inclusion now. Take another space now, another example which we have done, namely the product. <coughs> Once again, you have this product set Xi. Suppose each Xi is a topology, has a topology, okay, Xi tau i, it's not X tau i, okay. Then underlying each Xi has a, uh, has a Cartesian, has a topology and I have taken Cartesian product of this side. And I have these projection maps, Pi from X to Xi, coordinate projection. By definition 2.78, whatever, namely product topology, it follows that the product topology X is nothing but induced topology. It looks like the definition of product topology has been adopted here to define the induced topology. That's all. It's the same definition. Okay, only this is this is a special case, that's all. Right? P in a PI inverse of UI collection, that collection is taken as the sub base. So that's what it is. Okay. So both of them fit into one single generalization here. And this generalization can give you lots of other examples, unimagined examples, not very familiar also. Sometimes wonderful examples. Okay, if you develop some theory for for uh, just product spaces, imitating that, it may be available for any induced topology like this, right? And then it will be available to those all strange kind of things also. So that is the idea of putting this one together. Right now. This is the deep sea, you cannot uh, get into that one right now. So you have to just be aware of it, that's all. So here is a remark, especially the word weak topology. In functional analysis, 
induced topologies play a very very important role there you have a normal linear space x one single non linear space and take the induced topology on x from the family of all continuous linear maps f from k to f from x to k or k is the field either you may be real numbers or it may be complex numbers why should i put continuous first of all why not just linear when these spaces are large namely infinite dimensional okay linear maps may not be continuous i have already given you such an example in the previous day in the in the in the in the yesterday's lecture the previous module okay the end, end coordinate of the function was n times t okay that's a linear map but it is not continuous okay so so there are lots of linear maps which are not continuous linear maps are automatically continuous when you have finite dimensional uh vector spaces non linear spaces so you take all continuous linear maps let's a small family linear maps into k they are called linear functionals so with this family now you put a topology on x okay so that topology is called weak topology it's easy to see that with respect to this topology a sequence xn in x is convergent if and only if f of xn is convergent for every continuous linear map so this was the motivating idea of putting this topology it is convenient to have this one so that you know we can recognize this space by sequences also it turns out that x star which is called the conjugate space of x this is named by some author some people call dual space and so on dual when you take all linear maps you take that's why they want to make it different this is called conjugate space continuous linear maps okay so conjugate space x is a normal linear space you can give it a norm also okay and hence has a topology on its own so this norm is what is called the the linear norm supremum norm whatever okay but often one considers the double conjugate space of x space this x double star which is nothing but continuous linear maps no okay linear maps on x star so all continuous linear k, k x star to k take that and then use this family to give a weak topology on x star okay so in uh, function analysis they have just a different name to distinguish this one but this is also weak topology only this is called weak star topology weak star topology is on x star the weak topology is on x only that difference is there but both of them are the induced topologies with respect to a certain family of functions so you can just call them as weak topology there are many other situations also in which weak topology is used in analysis we can't go into them much deeper okay now let us come to co-induced topology in sub in some sense it is a dual notion of induced topology okay this time the fact one single y is fixed the codomain the families of functions from xi to y are taken and each xi is given a topology okay so in some sense arrows are reversed that's all that's why it's a dual 
dual uh, situation. Now, again, we want to give some topology on why, similar to the earlier considerations, a meaningful topology, meaningful with respect to these functions as well as the topology here. The first condition is that all the FIs must be continuous. Once again, you can just give index free topology on Y, the least one, very smallest one, then automatically all functions will be continuous. Once again, this approach is useless, so we reject this one outright for a similar reason as we have rejected discrete space in the case of induced topologies, right? So what we want to do automatically brings us to the following definition now. Let y be a set and fi from xi to y to y be families of functions. The largest topology on y such that all fi's are continuous is called the co-induced topology on y from the family fi or you may say with respect to fi. Okay. The following theorem, the proof of which is completely trivial or similar to what we have considered in the, in the case of quotient spaces or something like that, gives the existence and uniqueness of such a topology on y. What is the theorem? Y is a set, f y are functions as, as, as before. Put tau equal to all u contained inside y such that f i inverse of u is inside tau y for every i. Okay. So this is a very stringent condition, you may say. But don't put anything else in discrete space is taking is too stringent so don't don't make it too small take only those uses that fi inverse of u is inside tau y for every i automatically this will be a topology automatically whenever there is some tau prime here which is such that all the fi's are continuous Okay, f y inverse of that u will be inside tau. That means tau prime is contained inside tau. So this is largest. Okay, so that's why this proof is complete trivial is what I told you. Once again, let us have a few remarks here. One important special case is what we have studied quite thoroughly, but we will keep studying it again and again. What is it? It is one function q from x to y and that is surjective function. Just start with that. As soon as you have a topology here, take the co-induced topology on y. What is it by definition? It is the largest topology on y such that q is continuous. What is the construction? Exactly the same as in the case of quotient space. There is no indexing here, just one q is there, f i f1 equal to q. q inverse of u is open in x will mean that u is open in y. Over. And that is the definition of the quotient, quotient topology there, where q from x to y is a surjective function and x is a topology. So I am just recalling that one, right? So, so, this is a direct generalization, you may say, of the quotient space construction or if you have done this one before or just now you have done it, the quotient space is a special case, very, very special case, only one function and also I am assuming that is subject. Okay. Another important case is that we have done, that we have studied you know before so this is 
little more complicated situation now actually. So you have to pay more attention to this one than to the quotient space construction where there is only one function. Take the case wherein y itself is now union of xi's and y has the coherent topology with respect to xi's which are subspaces. Remember the water definition of coherent topology. Y has a topology. In that topology, xi's are subspaces and then it satisfies some condition. So that is the meaning of coherent topology. Remember that. Okay, I won't say that this coherent topology is a special case of this case. Namely, now start with a, uh, ignore the topology that you have taken right in the beginning for y. Now give the co topology on y using the topologies on x size. Okay, and what is the map? Maps are from x i to y inclusion maps. Okay, x i to y inclusion maps. What you get is nothing but the original topology on y. So, by the very definition of current topology, it follows that this is the co topology. Why? What is the open subset of y? In the definition, you see. A is open in Y, if A intersection XI is open for every I. That is precisely the definition of this one here, where each FI is inclusion map. U contained inside Y, I will put here, if and only if U intersection XI is inside tau I. Over. So it will give you the exactly whatever tau, tau you started with. So, coherent topology is a special case of what induced topology, co induced topology. Okay. However, not all co induced topologies are coherent with the original family of topological spaces X, Y, to Y. I want to make it clear. Suppose x i to y are subspaces, okay, and you have taken the inclusion maps, and now you give the co induced topology. That topology will be coherent, maybe, but you started already with the topology there, right? Some topology you started, and to take the some subspaces. And then you took uh, took this co induced topology. That topology may not be called the original topology. Or it, so that in that sense, it may not be the coherent topology. So, not all co induced topologies from the original subspaces may be coherent topology. That is the meaning of this. A special case of importance which we have discussed earlier. When we have a countable family size of topological spaces, one contained in the other, and each xi is closed subspace of xi plus one. In that case, the co-induced topology gives you the same topology which you started with. So that means it's coherent topology. Mm -hmm. The co-induced topology in this case we have seen earlier is coherent with respect to xi. There are special cases where this can happen, happen, like open subsets. That's another case, or locally finite closed subfamilies, etc. Okay, so there are cases wherein this can occur, but cases where this doesn't occur. All. Okay. Another special case of importance is that Xi is the family of compact subspaces of a locally compact Hausdorff space. So this I am mentioning that because it is so important. So right now I will just mention that we are going to study this one later on when we study compact spaces and locally compact Hausdorff spaces and so on. 
okay right now you don't know these terminologies let us say so don't worry about this similarly a lot more about quotient maps can be studied only after we get familiar with other topological notions okay so we have just begun these induced and co-induced topologies so we have exp explicitly five different cases of this okay two for two two, two or five or four what how many uh, subspace topology product quotient and this one is union right so and coherent topology and so on union under union coherent topology is under union itself anyway yeah so i will conclude it with a with a easy example here okay but this is only for understanding the uh, depth of our knowledge of co-induced topology all right so take a break that's all this example is not of any use let x tau be any topological space okay consider the family eta x x belonging to x what are eta x is our inclusion map of the singleton x inside x inclusion map singleton x to inside x now these singleton x are topological spaces right what is the co-induced topology on the family uh, from this family on the set x what is the co-induced topology that's what i'm asking okay by definition something is open in x okay if and only if intersection with singleton x is open in singleton x for every x if the this uh, this point is not in not in the set u then the intersection is empty so it's open if it is inside that the intersection is singleton x singleton x is so an open subset of singleton x so what do i what i have concluded i took an arbitrary subset of x i have shown that it is open right so this will always give you the discrete topology on x right this is a discrete topology on x okay for example more more uh, uh, you know certain example you could have taken x to be r then all singletons will be actually closed subspaces yet the co-induced topology is discrete not the original r at all okay so just closeness is not enough see in this theorem we had everything is closed in this one and xi is closed inside xi plus 1 increasing sequences etc we had right or we had what is called as locally finite family of closed sets also okay neither of the condition is satisfied here this family is not locally finite okay in general in the inside r for example it is not locally finite so when it is locally finite it just means that the space is a uh, uh, discrete space you can prove that okay uh, sorry uh, uh, this is this is locally finite this is not locally finite but it is point finite okay so this is also a nice example in that way but let us leave it i mean this is just for understanding what happens to the co-induced topology in conclusion starting with the topological space x tau 
and a cover just like when you had uh, x to y surjective map in the case of quotient space you take all all the points otherwise some points are left out there will not be any uh, structure on that part so x is union of x i of some special importance these x i are you have chosen nicely you know represented like this. they cover the whole thing they are like a representative subsets it is often the case that we consider the coinduced topology tau hat that is notation on x which is usually finer than the given topology tau okay so it's a finer topology than tau so this is a an important uh, phenomenon at least to um, uh, all uh, you know nice mathematical ideas have been developed from this one this can be used by politicians also perhaps in uh, construction of of uh, states and you know countries and so on so he, here is a, an exercise now which you can immediately answer because i have explained the things behind it okay let x equal to union of xi where each xi is given the topology tau y let tau y denote the topology co-induced from the collection put tau y equal to tau hat restricted to xi how the two topologies on xi compare with each other next thing is show that this tau hat is coherent with respect to xi tau y small tau y you started with arbitrary tau y okay each xi it may not be coherent with respect to but if you put tau hat equal to tau y equal to tau hat ratio to xi then it's coherent okay and this this remark this exercise all i already explained it to you x equal to r and i am taking a equal to this family r it's a point finite but what happens you can understand okay so this exercise is already explained you can write down the details so that's all next time we will meet we will meet with uh, chapter 3 okay starting in earnest to study topological properties we have reasonably enough number of examples now other than the standard you know nonlinear spaces metric spaces and so on okay so we can start studying some topological properties now next time thank you